Imagine what your dynasty team could look like today if you had stashed high upside players last offseason. What if you stashed a Kyron Williams or a Puka Nakua after the draft or even a Jerome Ford sometime in the offseason? Well, in today's video, I'm giving you more than 30 names that you can stash in your dynasty leagues right now today or get very, very cheap. If you're in a bigger league or a smaller league, there should be something for everyone here. I'm going to be bringing you some of my takes and even some of the takes that you guys submitted from the community. But let's quickly start with players that should already be rostered. I'm thinking in a 12 man super flex, you know, PPR format. All of these names on your screen should already be rostered. Those quarterbacks in a super flex format, the running backs, the wide receivers like Dontavion Wicks and Michael Wilson. These guys should be rostered in most 12 man. 15 to 20 bench type of leagues. All right, let's start off this official list with one of my favorite stashes this entire offseason. And that is the kid out of Penn State. We loved him last year, scouting him. Parker Washington of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Both Keep Trade Cut and Flock Fantasy Community Rankings have him ranked outside of the top 100 at the position. For me, as of today, before the NFL draft, he is my wide receiver 60. Five. And look, in Jacksonville, we have to be honest, that depth chart is completely wide open. This team just lost Calvin Ridley, who accounted for over 22% of the team's total target share. They added Gabe Davis, who, you know, 15% of the, of the Bills' target share last year, but has never really been a target hog. In fact, four years into the NFL, Gabe Davis has yet to have a single season over 100 targets. He's unlikely to ever be a go-to weapon in the NFL. He's never had a season over 57% catch rate. And in his highest targeted season, which was 2022, he only caught 52% of his targets. This is not like a reliable, short stuff, get him the ball. This is a deep threat, a big body that you can throw the ball to in the end zone. This is not really someone that you build your offense around. Now, I am well aware that the Jags are likely to bring another wide receiver in. Do they draft someone in round one or round two? Do they trade for Brandon Ayuk, which we've heard a lot? But let's keep in mind, let's get on the same page right here, right now, before you get into the rest of this video. The point of this video is not to tell you guys, here are a list of all the names that are going to help you win your championship. That's not the point of this video. The point is to find the needle in the haystack, the value that maybe no one else can see that we might be able to see here on the low low. Okay, let's just get on the same page right here, right now. But Parker Washington showed some flashes in 2023. From weeks 1 to 12, Christian Kirk was healthy and Parker got no work. He had zero targets, averaged zero points per game. But in weeks 13 onwards, Christian Kirk did not play because of an injury. We saw Parker get a little bit more involved. He averaged 6.4 points per game, including a breakout game where he scored over 20 PPR points and a touchdown. Last year, something that we should consider, Christian Kirk played more on the outside than he has before for the Jacksonville Jaguars, almost 28% of his snaps. And don't forget that Christian Kirk played outside primarily as an Arizona Cardinal, right? In 2018, 68% out wide. In 2019, 60, well, 58% out wide. In 2020, 83% out wide. It's only until he got to the Jags where he, he really kind of switched primarily in that last year in Arizona to the slot. So could they ask Kirk to play outside a little bit more now that there's no Christian Kirk and Zay Jones is further into his career? Could they ask Parker Washington to get into the slot? Maybe what we do know is that is where Parker Washington thrives. He played over 87% of his snaps at Penn State in the slot. At the end of the day, it's a player that we love, a player that we could see being a reliable slot weapon. Why not pick him up and just see what happens at that point, right? All right, the second stash, and this is for super flex format. So if you're in a one quarterback league, just go ahead and skip to the next one, okay? Let's talk about Drew Locke. That's right, Drew Locke now of the New York Giants. Um, and really, I'm just thinking about the Geno Smith career arc when I'm thinking about a Drew Locke, right? Geno Smith, let's go back. Round two pick, pick seven. Drew Locke in his draft, a round two pick, pick 10 by the Denver Broncos. Let's look at the first two seasons for both of these guys. Geno's first two seasons, uh, very bad. Completed under 60% of his passes, 
just like Drew Locke, completed under 60% of his passes, had a touchdown percentage of about 3.1. Drew Locke was a little bit better and threw a ton of interceptions, Geno, that is a 4.2 interception percentage, whereas Drew is right around that 3% mark. And Drew Locke has had some opportunities to sit behind some, some good players. Geno Smith has been able to be coached up by some really good coaches over there in Seattle. And he was able to start a couple games for Seattle last year and even ended up beating the uh, Eagles in week 15. What could that have done for his confidence? Now he gets a new landscape. He goes to the Big Apple in New York and he gets to compete with Daniel Jones, which I think all of us would agree for the most part that the Giants are probably not sold on Daniel Jones. Look, it wasn't all Danny Dimes fault last year. The offensive line was awful. No receivers of note to rely on. However, even when this team originally gave him that four-year contract, they put a little two-year out in that contract to kind of save themselves if they need to. You can see after this year, they have an out, which will cost $22 million on their dead cap. But look at the rest of the money in 25 and 26. I think it's very likely that they cut him after this year. So if this team doesn't go quarterback at sixth overall in the first round, and Daniel Jones, if we can agree, maybe we don't, He's not their long-term future. Why wouldn't Drew Locke get a chance at some point to start for this team and see what he can kind of do? So at the end of the day, again, this is not about finding guys who are going to absolutely win your championship. It's about what could we find? Could we find the next Geno Smith? Because that's a really good quarterback too if he develops into that later in his career. All right, the third player. <laughs> and I just know I'm going to get some hate for this. Hey, I love this player last year. It has not worked in the NFL whatsoever, but we're talking about stashes, trying to find the needle in the haystack, a running back, Zach Evans of the Los Angeles Rams. Go ahead, lay it on me. I, I can feel the hate comments already coming in. All right, on Keep Trade Cut, he's RB75. For me, he's my RB61 as of today. And again, friendly reminder, this is just a stash video. We're trying to find the needle in the haystack. This in no way indicates to you that I don't like Kyron Williams. It doesn't indicate that I don't think he's going to be a dominant player for fantasy in 2024, but just hear me out. There's a reason to stash Zach Evans. Firstly, let's look at the Sean McVay era and what that has meant for RB usage. Firstly, Sean McVay hasn't had a running back with back-to-back 1,000-yard -back rushing seasons since the 2017-2018 seasons. He also hasn't had a running back repeat as the team's leading rusher since the year 2019. Let's look at the Rams running back leaders in yardage from 2020 to present day. In 2020, it was Cam Akers. He had 31% of the team's rushing yards. In 2021, Sony Michelle with 50% of the team's rushing yards. Then it went back to Cam Akers in 2022. And then, of course, in 2023, Kyron Williams dominates with 56% of the team's rushing yards. And he missed time. He was absolutely dominant. But if you're sitting here and you're thinking, oh my God, this kid's so biased. He won't get over Zach Evans. You think I've lost my absolutely, just my mind is gone. That's probably what you're thinking right now. Let's just travel back in time. Okay. Just be realistic with me here for a second. Let's travel back. I'm not going to ask you to travel back too far. How about just one off season ago? Okay. Because one off season ago, Cam Akers was ranked as the RB20 in dynasty football. Kyron Williams was the RB79 in May of 2023. Kyron was coming off a rookie year where he had 35 rushing attempts, zero touchdowns. There's a reason no one saw the Kyron Williams breakout 2023 season coming. I mean, no one can really claim that they saw that. All right. Again, I'm not suggesting Kyron's job is in trouble. However, I'm shedding some light that things can change quickly and they change every single offseason. What if there was something that Sean McVay wanted Zach Evans to work on in his game? And now let's say he's had an offseason to work on that. We have seen Sean McVay use late round picks into their second year, Kyron Williams, and they have been successful in a very good offense, an offense that knows how to run the ball. So add Zach Evans. Let's see what happens. All right, the fourth player that I think you should add, this is sneaky. All right, I'm trying to dive deep into my bag here for you guys. How about Calvin Austin of the Pittsburgh Steelers? Keep trade cut, wide receiver 105, Flock Fantasy Community 94. He is my wide receiver 88 as of today. And similar to Parker Washington, this depth chart, and even to a larger extent in Pittsburgh, is completely wide open for the taking. Outside of George Pickens, now that they traded away Deontay Johnson, 
There's not a single wide receiver of note to even mention to you. Van Jefferson? Quez Watkins? Denzel Mims? I mean, Calvin Austin has a clear opportunity based off this depth chart to step up this year. Now, of course, we all agree there's plenty of names that could fill that wide receiver two role or even wide receiver one role in Pittsburgh. Your Lad McConkeys, your Ricky Pearsall, your Roman Wilson, Jalen Polk, all those names are good, eligible players to replace Deontay Johnson. However, in the event that this team doesn't go heavy wide receiver, Calvin could step into a bigger role. He could, right? That's the key word of this entire video. What could happen? Let's try and get as many wild cards, lottery tickets as we can. And Calvin Austin at Memphis put up some huge, huge numbers. In his last two years, he had over 2,200 receiving yards, 137 receptions, and 19 receiving touchdowns. Remember, Calvin's NFL career has not started off hot, but in his rookie season, he was injured the entire year. In his sophomore season, his team had a rotation of Kenny Pickett, Mason Rudolph, and Mitch Trubisky at quarterback, one of the worst passing offenses in the NFL for the last year. You could argue that Calvin's had really no chance to even showcase if he can be a productive receiver in the NFL. And even if this team adds like an alpha X or outside wide receiver, I could see Calvin getting more involved in the slot if he, you know, is in the plans for this team in 2024. So at the end of the day, take a shot. What's going to cost you? Some fab? Okay, it's worth it. All right, the fifth player I'm going to bring to you guys is a tight end that I am absolutely thrilled to talk to you about. I really think he's one of the best ads this offseason. You can trade him for fifth round picks if you even have fifth round, four, late fourth round picks in, in a lot of leagues. But before I get into that, I just want to quickly let you guys know that if you want to support myself and Badaki on the channel, if you want to get your dynasty team reviewed by us in a live stream, give you some direction on what you could do moving forward. And it's very simple. All you need to do is become a mother flocker member with the promo code land. Check out the pinned comment. Feel free to DM us with any questions. You'll get everything that you see on your screen. And of course you were supporting us. You're keeping the lights on. So we appreciate you big time. All right, the fifth player, a guy that I think everyone should be adding if they can, is Greg Dulcich, the tight end in Denver. My tight end 21, keep trade cut tight end 23. In 2023, let me read you his stat line. Three receptions, 25 yards, finish as a tight end 97. And Zach, you're sitting here telling me that I should add Greg Dulcich to my team? What's wrong with you? Well, here's the deal. He was injured a lot this year. In his rookie season, he had a very impressive season. And in fact, I think Greg Dulcich, his rookie season was one of the more impressive seasons from a rookie tight end we have seen in a long time, and no one is talking about it. And I get it. It was a while ago. But let's look at his rookie season. He dealt with injuries to begin the year. He was activated in week six. From week six to 16, when Greg was healthy, he was averaging 8.6 PPR points per game, and he was a tight end 10 in that span. Let's talk about how good was Greg's rookie season historically. All right, Greg is, and, and buckle up here for a second, okay? Because it's going to blow some minds, I think. Maybe it won't. Maybe you don't care. But Greg is one of 11 tight ends in NFL history to average at least 3.3 receptions a, a game and 40 receiving yards per game as a rookie. He is one of 11 tight ends in history to do that. Most of the tight ends that are on this list are having really good careers or had really good careers already. Jer Jeremy Shockey, excuse me, Sam Laporta, Jordan Reed, Dalton Kincaid, Evan Ingram, Kyle Pitts, Aaron Hernandez, you know, a different situation, right? But these are some very productive tight ends in the NFL. Don't forget what he was able to do when he was healthy as a rookie. Uh, Denver, they're in a position where they just need a receiving option to step up big time. In 2023, their number one targeted player was Cortland Sutton. That's fine. Their second targeted player was Jerry Judy, who's no longer on the team. Their third targeted player was Samaje Pirine. You heard that right, fellas. Samaje Pirine was their third targeted receiver on their team. They need someone to step up. Why not Greg Dulcich? Why not in 2024? He's still so young. There's so much career ahead of Greg Dulcich. All right, the sixth player that I think you guys should go pick up. How about Josh Palmer? 
An under-discussed name could be a sneaky ad. My wide receiver 64 in Dynasty. My questions to you is, what if the Chargers don't address wide receiver in round one or two? At pick five overall in round one, there's a good chance they go Joe Alt, who is a generational offensive tackle. They need help on their offensive line. Greg Roman, Jim Harbaugh, all signs point towards them wanting to run the ball effectively. They're going to need to get a superstar offensive lineman in the draft if they want to do so. What happens if they pass up on wide receiver in round two then? Could Josh Palmer be a weekly viable flex option? I mean, could he? Oh, well, let's look last year. What did Palmer do when the team's wide receivers were injured in the 2023 season? Well, there was no white Mike Williams, excuse me, from week three onwards because he tore his ACL. From week three onwards, uh, you can see Josh Palmer's splits. In split, that's going to show you with Mike Williams. Out of split, this is without Mike Williams. Josh Palmer stepped up in a big way, averaging over 12 PPR points per game, averaging over 71 receiving yards per game in those splits. All right, well, how about no Mike Williams and no Keenan Allen? Because fr from week 14 onwards, we didn't see much Justin Herbert, but we also had no Mike Williams and no Keenan Allen. And in those splits, those three games, a small sample size, Josh Palmer averaged 14 points per game, over seven targets per game, and almost 70 yards per game. It's an extremely small sample size. I totally hear you guys. But in games without Mike Williams and Keenan Allen, Josh Palmer averaged 14 points per game, which would have been good for wide receiver 23 on a per game basis in the season 2023. Look, the Chargers are definitely going to add wide receivers. I agree. Their offense is going to fundamentally change. The volume probably is going to go down. But this is a free ad for a lot of people on their waiver wire. Why not add Josh Palmer? What if they address wide receiver in round four? Could Palmer be the number one on this team? He certainly was ahead of Quentin Johnston last year. Add him and see what happens. All right. The seventh player that I think should be a free ad for a lot of people is J.K. Dobbins, currently a free agent at the time of recording this video. He's the RB45 in my rankings. This is very simple. This won't take long. No one in Dynasty, let's get on the same page. No one in Dynasty, and I mean no one, should be in on J.K. Dobbins long term. Simply put, shouldn't happen anywhere in any league, all right? Achilles injuries are really a death sentence for a fantasy running back, for a running back in the NFL. This was the same reason that I was completely out on Cam Akers a couple years ago and also James Robinson. However, for both Cam Akers and James Robinson, there was a small period of time after their injuries where you could have sold them for second round picks because there was a period of time where they're able to produce some decent numbers. Okay, so our goal with Dobbins is for him to sign to an RB needy team, the Chargers, Dallas, right? Insert RB needy team. If he gets work in season, what can you sell him for? Because if you have Dobbins right now, you know damn well you can't sell him for a penny. You couldn't sell him for a snack pack at McDonald's, all right? So we pick him up. If he signs with Cowboys and he splits work and he gets some opportunity, you know, what could you sell him for in season? All right, we got some honorable mentions here, and then I'm going to get to some suggestions from you, the community that you guys submitted. But here are some honorable mentions that didn't make my list, but I wanted to just let you guys know. Jarrett Stidham, there's a chance, I guess, he could be the starting quarterback for the Broncos. Probably it's going to be a train wreck, but in super flex leagues, pick him up. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? People were getting second round picks for Josh Dobbs last year. Okay, anything's possible. Rico Daddle right now looks like the number one in Dallas before the draft. Um, you got guys like Curtis Samuel who just signed. I put some of the Patriot wide receivers there because they're going to get a quarterback, I believe. Uh, is KJ Osborne, the new free agent signing, going to be you know, a, a good weapon for them? We'll have to wait and see. Greg Dortch is probably the starting slot receiver in Arizona. Charlie Jones could take over the uh, Tyler Boyd role in the slot. Noah Brown just got a, an extension. And Daniel Bellinger, if Darren Waller's career is toast, Bellinger could be a good player for them. I mean, he's a good athlete. But that takes me to the part of the video where I am now going to look at your submissions over on the Discord. I asked you guys to tell me who you thought the best stash was in Dynasty, and, and I got three submissions from y'all, which was awesome. The first one is from Stephen Day, and I'll just say, I'm not going to agree with all these, all right? I'm sorry. Don't take it personally if I didn't agree. It just means I don't, I don't 
see what you see. And that's okay, because I bet you a lot of people are commenting down below right now. Check the comment section. There will be people who 100% disagree with me on a video where I'm telling them to stash people. So that is the nature of what we do. But Stephen Day says Malik Willis. All right. <laughs> you are going to have to convince me on this one, man. He says uh, Malik Willis in the NFL is being treated as a bust, but he's actually mostly an unknown. College showed everything we want in a fantasy football quarterback, but he needed time. The last coaching staff clearly didn't believe him, but now he has a new staff and he is free. Okay, well, I want to consult the comment section. What do you guys think about Malik Willis? I guess technically this is the definition of a deep stash. My issue is uh, I just, the, the draft capital wasn't there for Malik. There have been no signs to show us that he will be an NFL quarterback. I'm not even sure that he's a backup level guy. I, I don't know. I think I'm out, but it depends on how deep your rosters are, I guess. I know this is one of Steven's favorite players, uh, so I'll, I'll give him some grace there. All right, the next one is from Masterus VI. He says, one of the best stashes in Dynasty is Jawan Jennings. Hear me out. He says, hear me out, okay? He says, he was on his way to getting Super Bowl MVP votes, looking great against some of the best secondary play all year. The best part is he's free. And you can trade a future fourth or he's on waiver waivers in several leagues. I think it's low risk investment that couple that could turn into a second or third round pick if Ayuk is traded. I'm glad you mentioned that last part there. To me, I don't see any value for Juwan Jen Jennings unless Ayuk is traded. Because to be fair, there were certain games where Juwan Jennings, there was this weird connection between him and Brock Purdy. So in, in bigger leagues, or even if you want to hold Juwan Jennings until after the NFL draft, you know, that that definitely could be worth it because if the Niners don't go wide receiver in the draft and let's say they do trade Ayuk to Jacksonville, Pittsburgh, whatever, then absolutely Juwan Jennings will be one of the best waiver wire pickups at that time. So that's thinking ahead. All right, D. James says, I would 100% stash Trey Palmer. He's got a decent quarterback on lockdown for the next three years. And he is taking the spot of wide receiver three in an offense that will eventually move on from Evans or Godwin. If not, I also like A.T. Perry for that for the exact same reasons. They both played well and look like they will take a bigger, take over as bigger X receivers in the future, taking over for Thomas and Evans. All right, so he sends a trade here as well that he did. He got Palmer sent away the 306 and the third. Now look, just my personal opinion doesn't mean it's right. But with how deep this class is in 2024 at the wide receiver spot, I think I actually prefer those third round picks. I could be wrong here, but you know, we have done draft mock draft after mock draft after mock draft after mock draft on this channel on our live streams. And the middle of the third round feels like the middle of a second round typically in a rookie draft. So just my personal opinion, I think I prefer if that's the price, the picks. But I have heard a lot of people in on Trey Palmer. So D. James is not alone here. And I could be missing the boat. I could totally be missing the boat here. Um, but I just don't know that Evans or Godwin are going anywhere soon. Uh, but A.T. Perry is super interesting, I will say. Like, I like the A.T. Perry call. Uh, because right now, Michael Thomas just moved on. And there could be an opportunity for someone to step up there. And we did see him score some touchdowns last year. But, uh, all right, guys. Over 30 names i gave you today as stashes what do you think you like some of these you don't like some of these let me look, know in the comment section below do me a favor hit that like button subscribe and we'll see you soon all love now that those idiots are done talking who needs some rankings hell yeah i need some rankings then use promo code land l-a-n-d for 30 percent off any membership at flockfantasy.com oh it's so easy even your grandma could scan that qr code right there